All right, so now we're gonna talk about uh, propellers. Now there's pretty much two major types of propellers. The one, these little 250s, um, I actually kind of like because the motors, the shaft on the motor is actually threaded. On a lot of the more powerful motors, uh, it's not threaded and you don't have the ability to have these quick attach ones, but with those smaller ones, for some reason, that seems more popular to have the quick attach. So you've got two different types of propellers. Like this is one type where literally it's like through and through, right? You could go right through. And then you've got this this propeller, which like has this little cap on it, but in the inside, whoops, hello. There we go. On the inside, it's threaded. Uh, and so it makes putting them on the actual quadcopter like really fast and taking them off really fast. The downside is propellers, especially cheap propellers like these, come and they are way off balance and um so what i'm going to talk about briefly is balancing we're not i'm not going to be using these carbon fiber ones but this is just evidence of nice quality um, propellers so what this is is this is a propeller balancer and the way that it works is you basically uh screw the propeller in and you clamp it between like these two things here and this is like a magnet right so it's just like a really good bearing almost and uh, you will balance the propeller on here. And the goal is to put it on a level surface, right? And the propeller basically stay totally level, not one side coming bang down onto the uh, surface. As you can see, this propeller is actually really well balanced. I've never received a propeller that was balanced. I've always had to apply uh, something to balance them. So actually this is pretty good proof of why you want nice propellers. But at the same time, um, I don't really have too much problem with these little cheap ones. Obviously, you really can't balance these. I mean, you, you, there's a few things you, you could possibly do. Like you could, There's a few things you could do. But anyway, if you do balance a propeller, all you do is you add like little pieces of tape to the bottom side of the propeller, and that will add more weight, obviously. Tiny pieces of weight will do the trick. But honestly, um, on my larger quad, I balance all those propellers just because I can. Obviously, I've never, I can't balance these propellers. And... If I'm being honest, there is really, I don't notice the difference. Maybe if you were like a super good pilot or something, but I get plenty stable flight and I've never had to balance a propeller. The only thing that you have to do is, you know, you adjust trim on your controller fairly frequently. Right? Um, so anyways, what we're going to do is I'm going to take these off. Obviously, so like if you use the carbon, um, carbon propellers, take note, this is why, like with these propellers, it's impossible to make the mistake of putting the wrong propeller on because literally the threading just won't work. But on the larger quads with the shaft, it's not even threaded or anything, they just slide on. That's that was my that's my first learning experience. But anyway, so make sure you're using the right propeller. Like usually it'll say like which way it's supposed to spin, but you can also look at a propeller and you can tell it's, it's sh shaped down this way. So in order for there to be thrust down, this propeller must spin clockwise. So this would actually be for a black one, but I'm just going to show you. Um, and in fact, maybe this one's different, right? This one should spin counterclockwise. So this would be the correct one for this motor. And then, so you would put this on and then you would just screw this on over it. Right, that would be all you would do. But I'm gonna use these these other ones. Also, I like using the different colored uh, propellers simply because it's easier to see the orientation of the quad. Uh, another really great thing to do is to put like LED lights on there and then that's even better than the colored props. But anyway, maybe with the Raspberry Pi, we'll add some of that. Um, but, but for now, let's just get this thing taken off. So I'm gonna put on the propellers and then I'm gonna go to my garage and we're at least gonna test it slightly and then if things go well, congratulations. And if things go poorly, we'll, you know, debug. So on the first flight, I like to give enough throttle to be able to test the motions like forwards, backwards, and side to side. And this will at least tell you if your controller's directions are about right. But of course, due to the quadcopter quite literally dragging against the ground and air pressure created, uh, from being so close to the ground, you won't know too much more until you take off, but you want to make sure at least your controls are correct. Despite that, you still might have some minor problems.
all right, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, a couple couple issues right out of the gate, actually. Uh, the first thing was uh, I noticed, uh, probably the most important thing, actually, was that I noticed uh, the wires coming from the battery to the actual quad here. You know, basically, as you're putting the thing together, you're kind of being mindful of the wires the whole time. And usually what I do is I'll put a propeller on and I'll spin the propeller around and just see, is there anything in the vicinity? And I'll move the wires and just try to hit the propeller. And if you can make the wire hit the propeller, eventually it'll hit the propeller. So you want to make sure that never happens. But I had never done that with the battery plugged in. And as you can see, this little adapter thing is just a problem. I have to work on this. I'll probably spin this bottom plate around and change the orientation of the plug coming out. But anyway, um, hadn't checked for that. And then when I was in my garage, I kind of, it caught my eye and I was like, oh, that's a problem. So I took a zip tie and actually zip tied it over here, at least just for testing purposes. But I'll end up actually having to take this apart down here and probably spinning the actual uh, power distribution board around. But anyway, um, so I'll be doing that. <laughs> but then the other thing that was a problem was for some reason on my board, the motor layout got reset and I, it was just reset to that first option again, not an X copter. So yeah, that's why the sensors just went crazy, I guess. <laughs> um, so that kind of sucked, but at least all, you know, all that happened is we broke up a propeller and I was more than prepared. I've got tons of these things. So <laughs> anyway, not a big deal. Um, but anyway, so uh, that's that. If you have questions, comments, is your quad not working for whatever reason? I've put together like, yeah, I'm not a pro or anything, but I put together five of these. And actually, if anything, I'm an idiot. And I've made a lot of mistakes putting them together. So chances are, if you're having a problem with something, I've come across that problem. So feel free to ask <laughs> below and I'll do my best to help you. Uh, otherwise, what's coming up is, as you can see, I've actually already got the Raspberry Pi on there. The Grove Pi is on there. Um, I wanted to put those on there immediately just because that way I can hold it. I can hold the quad like this and see if things are balanced or not. And so I wanted to put everything on there at once because I wanted to make sure I could place everything in such a way that center of, of gravity was where it needed to be. So uh, anyway, that's already on there. We're ready to start slapping on a bunch of sensors and all that. I will at least be adding a distance sensor and a camera. I've got, there's other sensors I really want like a accelerometer and altimeter and stuff like that, but it's going to be kind of difficult. I'm having a hard time getting my hands on these sensors. They seem to be pretty hard to get. They're almost always out of stock. Whoa! Something's different. Anyway, so before you go flying your quad off into the sunset, uh, there's a few things you need to think of before you head out the door. So you need to consider the rules and laws and all that in the area that you live. So for example, I live in the United States of America and then more micro, I live in the state of Texas. So just for some examples here in the United States of America, if you fly around a drone outside, you need to have that drone registered with the FAA. Yes, this is a drone. So um, some other things this might be is an aircraft. It might be a surveillance device and it could even be a deadly weapon. So be very careful. So anyways, in the United States of America, if you wanna fly your drone outside, anywhere, including your own backyard, you have to register with the FAA. You can fly it around in your garage without registering with the FAA. So that's one. Then we go to the more micro level in the great state of Texas. Um, there is no such thing as public land. So a lot of states in the union have what's known as public land, where it's almost like this nice communal land that everybody shares and can do all kinds of fun stuff on it. Well, in Texas, no, all land is private land. It just so happens that Texas has other laws regarding drones. And one of those laws would be, um, you cannot surveil somebody or record somebody with your drone. So you can't record a private individual on private property with your drone. If you do, and you disperse that media, i.e. you just put it, you got a new new drone, you put a camera on there and you showed some people, you, you, you flew around the drone, you saw some cool stuff, and then you uploaded it to YouTube. Well, guess what? If you capture a private individual on private property, you can be fined a lot of money. It's like, I swear, it's like $10,000 $10, per second of footage. It's absurd. So keep that in mind. And imagine how difficult it is to fly a drone around with a camera on it and not capture a private individual on private property because all property is private, so seriously. So then you might be thinking, ah, I will just take my drone to a park, fly it around in the park. Well, hold on there, little Johnny, because guess what? Parks are not public land. Again, those are owned by the federal government, most likely. More specifically, the US Army Corps of Engineers. 
So you think, I'm going to be safe. I'm going to go fly it around in the park uh, and keep it away from people and all this kind of stuff. Maybe on a football field or soccer field, nobody's on it. Too bad you are on private property, government property. You fly it around. U.S. Army Corps of Engineers personnel will come and greet you. Not that I know from experience. And will tell you, you cannot fly aircraft on their land. Well, I don't think this is an aircraft. It is, you know, the, the start of a definition of what is not a drone and what is an aircraft is 55 pounds. But I digress. I'm not about to uh, argue with the Army Corps of Engineers person while I'm on their land. It's not even your land. So no matter what, if they ask you to leave, you have to leave. Otherwise, guess what? <laughs> Another law violation, which is trespassing. So... It can be difficult. So if you live in a state like Texas that is not so drone friendly as some of the other states, uh, the first place you should go is the AMA. It's Academy of Model Aeronautics. And you'll want it, you'll need to be a member with them. It's like, I think $80 a year, or something like that. And then you can go to any AMA location. You might have to pay a membership fee at that location, but you can go to any AMA location and subsequently, um, you can be a member and fly around. So around me, there's a, a place that's only like 10, 15 minutes away. It's got a 500 foot by 50 foot concrete runway. It's a really badass place to fly. Like that's the, it's the best place to fly. So um, it's not so bad if you do have horrible laws in your area because chances are somebody has done something. And if not, well, guess what? That plot of land is leased from who? You guessed it, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. It's like... Uh, I forget how many acres. It's a lot of acres. I want to say it's like, I can't remember how many acres. I'll get the number wrong. But it's a huge plot of land, and it's leased from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers for, I think, like $1,400 a year. So, yeah, not that much money. You can get a group of people together, and you can you can figure it out. Okay, so anyways, long story short, pay attention to the rules and laws in your area. You might see this as a fun toy, but the law might not. So, so just keep that in mind. Don't be stupid, and you probably won't find yourself in trouble. So anyways, that concludes the first section of the series. Go out and fly your little drone around. They're so much fun to fly. They're super maneuverable, and they're really fast, actually. I'm surprised how fast these things can get up to like 40 miles an hour. Or even faster if you put some really nice stuff on there and make it nice and lightweight. And then they turn on a dime. It's crazy. So anyways, go out and have some fun. Be legal. Be safe. And till next time.